Hi, everybody, and welcome to the <laughs> April Q&A. Uh, yeah, I know. Something looks a little different here, right? Something looks a little odd. Yeah, uh, I'm back to using the boom mic. Uh, unfortunately, my little lapel mic, I actually had it buried over here, uh, has finally crapped out on me. Uh, it's giving the annoying wailing feedback, and I can't fix it anymore. So uh, it's dead to me. It's sad, but it's dead to me. Uh, I'm just going to look around for something better. Or I'll just get another one of these. So, screw it. Yeah, I might just get another one of these. I kind of like this, how I have this set up. I was screwing around uh, for like the last, I want to say like 10 minutes, 15 at the most, uh, fixing this up, figuring out a good place to put it. Uh, I actually like the boom mic a lot. Uh, and for you figure for Q&A videos, uh, this works. I would just have to get a bigger um, clamp to put the arm on, and I could easily find one of those. I just got to measure how big of one that I need. And I could just attach it to my uh, end of my bed frame here. Uh, and then I'd be in business. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to look around into that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I want to look around to get on eBay. So uh, that'll be one. If I can find it on Amazon, I'll just tip my friend to get it for me. Uh, but I'd like to thank everybody for uh, submitting your questions uh, for this month's Q&A. Uh, again, I apologize that I have this. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, shit happens and... That lapel mic, uh, I, I think it was going to die at some point, and it just finally decided, oh, no, now's, now's the time I want to die. I, I'm just going to die right now, and I'm not going to work anymore for you. You can screw off and bite me. And I was just like, you son of a bitch. And it went. It died on me. So uh, I got 18 questions uh, this month to answer, and after I'm done recording this, I will be recording a... Uh, special channel update video because there are some things that are going to be happening here on the channel in the upcoming uh, weeks, months, and slash year. So, heads up on that. Uh, so, there won't be one added into the end of this Q&A because I got like 18 questions. It's probably going to be about a good 30 minutes, give or take. So, that's enough of that. Uh, and I'm also keeping an eye on my battery power because I have it so I can just reach down and flip the switch to for the plug, so that's pretty good, because my battery's worked on this thing pretty bad. So, uh, let's start off with the first question here. Uh, thank you all, by the way, again for submitting. Uh, since the Summer Olympics have been moved all the way to 2021, does that mean that future Summer Olympic events would have to be moved as well? I doubt it highly. Uh, the Summer Olympics got moved because of COVID-19, the pandemic, and everything else that's been going on. This isn't the first time that something like this has happened. Uh, There's an entire Olympic year that was canceled and the events just continued as normal. I think what will happen for it'll be the 2024 games, they'll just either not have them that year, just go, okay, look, the 2024 games are not going to happen. We're giving everybody a mulligan. Or they'll go, no, we're going to have the 2024 games. It's just going to be, you'll have to have one less year to train for it. And with athletes, they're constantly training. So it's not like they're stopping and, oh my God, we don't know what the hell we're doing anymore. We don't know what to do with our lives. They will always be training. They're constantly keeping themselves fit. Uh, they're working out. They're you know, improving themselves upon themselves again and again and again. So I doubt highly that they're going to just take this as a, oh, well, we're done, screw you guys, and walk away. Uh, it's more or less, I think, a we're not just going to up and let this die off the way it's dying off, but we're going to just do it the way it is. So for 2024, um, I think those would be still happening. This isn't really going to affect the Winter Olympics, which would be for a two-year difference. It would be 2022 for the Winter Olympics. Uh, that shouldn't affect them too badly, I would imagine. But as for the Summer Olympics for 2024, I don't see it affecting it. They'll either just cancel that one outright altogether, or it'll just be, you know, you just get one less year to prepare for it. Which, honestly, most of the athletes, I think, that do the Olympics are usually ready by, like, year three. Year four is just the final burning of it before they get there. So it's just like, oh, look, you get two years now to practice, and then uh, one year to not, so... Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, what do you think about late night talk show hosts doing their shows from their homes uh, for the foreseeable future because of what's been going on lately? Uh, I actually have been getting into a pretty uh, decent conversation with uh, one of my subscribers on my channel about this uh, with like TV shows 
uh, going late night or going uh, broadcasting from home. I actually like it, and this is why. This is my. This is where I live. Okay, this is literally my room. Uh, my grandfather's house, but my room in it. Uh, this is a backdrop behind me. Uh, if I had the ability or I made some, I would put sound dampeners around this thing and there wouldn't be a problem. I mean, my room is not the cleanest in the world. That's why it's like one little section. This brings the late night talk show hosts down to our level as YouTubers. So now they had these like massive studios where they could have um, constant a wave after wave of people coming in. It's like, here, you get to have this for the day, or you get to have this uh, group on, and you get to have this group and this group and this group. They can't have that now because now it's straight up, oh, look, you can't have a massive audience. Now you have to record from home. Now you're down to the YouTuber level. And for them, it's a step down, but for us, it evens the playing field out, at least for those that give a rat's ass about it. I don't. I do this for fun. I make no money off this. I make no money off of my YouTube channel. I make no compensations off of my YouTube channel. I get nothing out of my YouTube channel other than the satisfaction of bringing my thoughts, my opinions, my anger-inducing rants, and so forth to you, the viewers. So it doesn't bother me at all. But as far as a lot of, um, I want to say celebrities, that uh, do have this going on right now, they just have to suck it up and deal with it. It's not the end of the world. It's only going to be for a little while. They can suck it up. They can deal with it. If we've been doing it for so long, so can they. And I know I'll have to clean my mic. It's, I'll have to clean my mic off. I can kind of feel the spit going on it. I have my wind guard over there in a box. If I put it here, you have the arm coming here, and it'll like block half of my face, and I don't want to have that. Um, but, yeah, so I can just take a I, – I have some Clorox wipes. I can just take a Clorox wipe, too. It's not going to kill it at the end of the world. I didn't use it all the time anyway, but... Okay, uh, number three. What do you think will really change after this coronavirus thing dies down? I, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to safely say this, and I mean no disrespect to it, but all this has shown is how selfish of a race uh, the human race is. Um, people care less about anybody else other than themselves. And the people that do care about others are the ones that I think are getting the most attention, and they deserve it. Flat out, they deserve it. I'm not even going to lie on that. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, what's going to change after this? I think schools are finally going to see the fact that you can do a lot of stuff online, that they don't need to have a school building. They don't need to have, you know, to drag the kids there for six hours a day. It, it, stop dragging them to this concrete prison uh, for six hours a day. Let them stay at home. Uh, you know, just get grants, donations, and provide them laptops and tablets or whatever the hell you want to do so they can uh, learn from home and not have to spend all day in a freaking school building. I hated that. Uh, graduations are going uh, like online this year. I'm, I don't care. I mean, people have been complaining about that left and right, and I swear if I hear one more person uh, throw a fit because this class isn't getting a actual graduation, I'm going to lose my mind. Uh, I hated my graduation with a passion. I still do. I remember my best friend was valedictorian in my class, which tells you something to me. My best friend was the smartest person in my class, and I was, like, not even in the top 100. So what, is that, what does that tell you? I was not the smartest person in my, in my class. Um, but I hated my graduation, uh, mostly for the fact that when you graduate, it always feels like here's the small pond you were in. You were this, you know, big fish. You knew how everything worked. Welcome to the big pond. And now you have no damn idea. And even the learning that you got was just adequate enough to get you out the door. Uh, it's not, at least I didn't feel like it was that helpful. But yeah, so don't ask my thoughts on schools. <laughs> Um, as far as other things, uh, social distancing, I think is definitely going to be around for a while, staying six feet away from people, uh, restaurants and that I think are going to do a lot more curbside service. I really hate saying this, but I think a lot of businesses are going to do curbside service too. Like if you don't feel comfortable coming into the store, there's going to be too many people in there. Like during peak hours, they'll, uh, come up with an idea of here, just, you know, come, you know, come park in our parking lot in a special designated area for it. And here's where you can park, and we will bring your item out to you, and you don't have to set foot into the store. 
Uh, I kind of see that happening a lot more uh, than it is. So, but a lot of stuff's going to change. Uh, even after this dies down, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to change. But um, I I've said my piece on this. I mean, if anything, this is just shown how selfish people can be. Uh, at least some people that I've seen online. There are others that are being selfless, and they deserve recognition for that. They're putting others up before themselves, and that is how you should do things. You should never think of yourself first. You should think of others before yourself. That's the way I was. That's the way I always think. That's the way I was brought up to think. You know, other people come first before you. Uh, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. So Spock. You know, don't get upset if I don't agree with you. It's my opinion. Uh, don't you just hate it when people say that one year was the worst year ever, but then when the next year starts, you get ten times, and it starts to get ten times as awful, they start to freak out. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 2016 was so horrible. Here's 2017. Ah! Yeah. No, no. That, that, that does bother me. Uh, a lot of people do that. Uh, i have constantly friends with people. Uh, some former classmates of mine that I talked to on Facebook uh, would do that. It's like, oh my god, this year sucks so bad. Oh, I can't take it anymore. And then they're, like, literally the minute February starts of the following year, all of a sudden it's like, oh my god, this is the worst year ever. It's like, really, you're two freaking months into it, and it's not that bad yet. <laughs> you, got, you got ten more months to go. <laughs> ten more months. Ten more months before you can say that this month sucks. Uh, hold on one sec. Okay, flip my, okay there we go. Hey, I have to flip my power switch. You have ten more months before uh, you could say that this is the worst year ever. You have ten more months to go. So, But yeah, it, that does bother the living crap out of me. I'm not going to lie. That, that pisses me off. Uh, do you think that things will ever get better in the world? <sighs> If you want an optimist answer, yes. If you want a Andrew answer, no. Uh, I don't really know where to go from this. Basically, here's how I see it. Uh, Pandora's box. There you go. You always have hope. Uh, you can hope that the world will get better. You can hope that things will improve. Whether or not they will or not, uh, I can't say. I don't know. I don't have the aforementioned ability to tell it's not my decision it's whatever happens happens you know shit falls downhill shit rolls downhill I, I can't say I can't say if something will or won't happen that could technically uh, be good or bad it's all dependent upon the world itself so I really don't know you know the world I mean the world could get better uh, it could get worse. I, it's a boomerang effect. You're going to have the lows and the highs. It's just, you know, what you consider good versus what somebody else considers good. So, yeah, like I said, Pandora's box. Uh, let's see here. What is going... Yeah, well, uh, yeah, what's going to happen with all of the anime shows next year because of what's been going on already this year? Yeah, I love the questions about this year already. <laughs> no offense, I like the questions. Um... Most of the anime series, uh, as of now, have been delayed. Uh, production's been delayed. They've been put on hiatus or suspended until further notice. Uh, I talked about this, ironically, as a side note, and then I never got to actually publish that side note uh, this past week in the podcast. But uh, One Piece is delayed. Uh, Digimon Adventure is delayed. Black Clover, I found out, has been delayed. Um, so many others have been hit with delay, 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 delay. And there's really nothing you can do about it. Uh, the main reason why is because, oh, well, you know, the COVID-19 outbreak uh, did screw a lot of people over. It did hold production. What's it going to do? Everything's just going to get shuffled. That's all. So basically, if something was coming out, like let's say this month, it'll just get pushed off till whenever they can get back in the studio, get the production going. Worst case scenario, 2020 will just be a, you know, bypass year, and then we'll just get 2021 will be... Here's the new stuff. Here's, you know, all the new anime that's going to come out last year. It's coming out in 2021. Think of this as year zero, and the next year would be year one. Year zero is when everything starts to form, and year one is when it's complete. So th that's how I'm kind of feeling about it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, anime was just getting good. Uh, we had 
Dr. Stone, which was really well done, uh, that ended back last year. We had Fire Force that ended uh, its first season last year. Uh, World Trigger's getting a new season, which I'm still looking forward to. Um, Tiger and Bunny's getting a new season. But a lot of these, though, can always run into production delays, uh, either because there's like a voice actor strike or animators can't get the correct thing. There's an issue with uh, licensing or like a voice actor gets sick or equipment malfunctions or there's a natural disaster. There's always something that can uh, slow and halt the production of an anime series. So it's not exactly a bad thing when it gets delayed. It's annoying, but it's not a bad thing, uh, so to speak. So I think mostly what's just going to happen uh, is just everything's just going to get pushed around. So basically... Uh, what would have came out this year would probably come out next year, and then what would have came out next year would just get pushed to the next year or jammed together. So that's really all there is. I mean, worst case scenario, we just get a whole bunch of new anime next year, like double what we would have gotten this year, and I don't think any anime fan will be upset about that. I mean, Boruto's on hiatus, but I don't see anybody crying. <laughs> I don't see anybody crying about Boruto. Uh, I see people crying because One Piece is on hiatus, which is fine. It was starting to suck. Uh, yeah, it was getting good, but then, you know, it's reaching, I think, the little apex. Uh, yeah, Digimon that had literally just started. Uh, and so many other series. But basically, it'll either get uh, delayed to next year, which is fine. And then next year's shows will either still premiere next year or get pushed. Probably, my guess would be get pushed, depending on how many people they try to bring in to get stuff done. I mean, they could bring on extra animators. They could pull people off of other projects and say, hey, we need your help with this. We want to piss whip this through. It, it depends. There's too many variables to ascertain what could and couldn't happen. So, uh, What do you like about YouTube? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> what do I like about YouTube? Um, Not much right now. <laughs> Uh, I like the fact that I can go on YouTube. I can get like reviews for stuff that I'm looking for on eBay. I can get um, like entertainment videos to watch. Like uh, I've been watching Oxhorn's uh, channel and his lore on Fallout 76, Fallout 4. Uh, I finished watching uh, Far Harbor on that, so that was pretty cool. He just started doing the Wastelanders DLC uh, lore which I was watching his live streams of the uh, Wastelanders uh, after he was done recording them, which weren't too bad. I don't like the opening, though. First, I don't like the opening for the Wastelanders <laughs> lore videos, though. I mean, it would have worked out better, I think, if you would have had that uh, Betsy robot go moo at, the, <laughs> you know, moo at the end of the video. I think that would have worked out better. <laughs> I think... Um, yeah, as far as uh, what I like about YouTube, uh, I can communicate and ironically be out there with more of you people. I can uh, talk with people. I can create something that gets people's attention or, you know, lights a fuse that could grow more attention. It's just what it is. Mostly for me, it's an outlet. Uh, and it's one that I can use to, you know, bring people together and entertain you. If you want to get a laugh out of me losing my shit for five minutes, or if you want to watch a video about where I discuss, uh, like, an anime, or I discuss two television shows going back and forth, or I'm looking at uh, discussing time travel, which I actually think about a part two of that. I don't, I haven't decided yet. I'm thinking of a part two. I might actually do that. I don't know yet. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so if it's stuff like that, I don't mind it. To me, it's basically something fun to do for a few hours to, like, a few days or just put something up. This way, I also make, like, a nice little uh, footnote for myself in history because I'm Web Designer 18 so you can Google search me. You can find me. Uh, you YouTube me. I'm, like, one of the first results that will come up. So that's really cool. <laughs> I did it recently. Uh, but that's the stuff that I like about YouTube is that I'm able to interact with people, um, put some context up so stuff that i would like youtube to improve though if you want to know that quick uh, i would love a video processing software uh direct from youtube uh to the creators like you can download it it's like i don't care if it's only like maybe 200 some megabytes uh you download the program you install the program and you are able to basically make your videos that will upload quickly to youtube like it is literally going to give you high quality video at the lowest possible frame rate so it'll upload quickly. I know YouTube's got the ability to do this, and that's the one thing that I really wish it would get off their ass and do because 
I'm having a hard time getting the videos to upload fast. Uh, and I think that would help them out so much. Like, look, people can make their own videos. That's fine. But let them put it into this program direct from you to make them. Then they can either upload it directly from the program or save it in a format to upload to your site later on which I think would be a very good idea. Uh, so if somebody out there at YouTube wants to get back to me on that one, I am more than open to discuss that. I, I can give you several good ideas. In fact, to be Movie Maker from Windows, uh, there's like open source ones. You can, guys can just take one of the open source ones and key it to your specific uh, set of requirements. I mean, I have them written down. And you can take that and go from there. So that would be an idea. But, uh, yeah. Uh, why did you feel motivated and inspired to make videos? Um, I felt, at first I did comedy. So, but my very first videos that I ever came out with were comedy videos. Uh, afterwards, I felt like, yeah, I could do this. Yeah, I could do this. And I got, took off the comedy because it was getting piss poor views. I was getting a little upset with myself for doing it. Then I got inspired by the CU podcast. I'm like, I could do this. Uh, and I put my stuff up on SoundCloud, but then SoundCloud only screws you over with three hours for free. Then you got to pay their asses, and I wasn't going to pay them when I'm broke. So I'm like, nah, screw that. So then I went back to YouTube. I fixed up the videos again like I did my comedy, and there we go. At this point, uh, the podcast is literally just instinct. It's, it's autopilot at this point for me. Other videos I feel motivated because something either irritates me or annoys me. I, I apologize if you hear the stink bug. I just saw it. I've been trying to capture them. Um, a lot of times I feel like motivated to like talk about something that's pissing me off, like for my rand videos or talk about shows, review something so that everybody knows, like, here, this is something that I kind of thought was interesting. Maybe you might like it too. Um, discuss stuff that, hey, you know, this is stuff that just pops into my head from time to time um, and other things. So there is that. It, it's not exactly a full-on um, what I do thing. It's... It is what it is. But yeah, I well, admit, yeah, why did I feel motivated and inspired? I just wanted to do something fun, and YouTube was the only game in town that I could go on. I mean, I wanted to do comedy, and YouTube was the only place in town I feel like I could put it up. Then when I went to do the podcast, I had no choice but to go back to YouTube because nobody else was able to do it. Nobody else was, I was able to upload anywhere else, so I went back to YouTube, and... The rest of it's just history at this point. I just did rant video because I got pissed off at Yu-Gi-Oh! And that was my first ever rant. Then it just spiraled from there. Uh, my discussions video was because I wanted to discuss some stuff. My review video was because I think at the time I saw like a really cool um, website or show or toy or something. I wanted to talk about it. Um, my rant video... Uh, rant videos I did... Um, Review videos, discussion videos. I used to do theories, but then I gave them up. So yeah, that's that. I that's about all I can say for what motivated me and inspired me is just, um, it's fun. Uh, what are we gonna call the next generation of people who will come into this world after this year? Now that we are deep into the coronavirus situation, I have no freaking clue. Look, I don't. I couldn't even tell you what my generation is called. Besides the slang term everybody uses that pisses me off. Uh, my generation is called millennials, and I hate that. I hate that phrase with a fucking passion. I think we're Generation X. Or, no, 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 we're Generation Y, I think. I don't know. I don't even know what generation... I don't even know what the hell we're called. Uh, I think it goes, like, Generation X, Y, Z. I think my mom was X. I think my generation's Y, and then there's Z. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know what the hell we are anymore. Uh, I don't even want to come up with slang terms for generations because I hate that because it feels demeaning. I mean, I don't like being called a goddamn millennial. I mean, I'm in my fucking 30s, for God's sake. Uh, and I'm getting tired of people doing commercials or going, oh, well, it's all the goddamn millennials' fault and they're blaming my generation yet for it. Uh, and they're not saying, like, oh, well, the next generation's millennials. No, they're blaming my generation yet for it. And it pisses me off. I, I hate that with a passion. So I really, I, I have no freaking idea what to call this next generation. I, I don't know. Nor do I really care either. Uh, someone invented a teleporter. Do you think that happened in the future? Yes. If, I had to be, if somebody would invent a teleporter, I guarantee you they could make uh, UPS, FedEx, and United States Postal Service their bitch. 
in a matter of minutes. Hell, I would even freaking do it. Uh, creating a teleporter is not that difficult. Uh, you just basically have to figure out a way to break the molecules down. Uh, th the way I thought of a teleporter is think like a scanner. Uh, imagine like a scanner or a printer. And how the printer is taking the image that you have up on the screen and then sending it either wirelessly or via the wired connection to the printer and it is using physical media to create that to recreate that image so like it takes the piece of paper and it goes here's your you know, here's your uh, precious picture that you wanted off of this computer using this medium so how do you create something like that 3d printer scanning technology and really really quickly create it boom problem solved recreates it just like that except it utilizes whatever you're sending gets sent via particles or literally gets broken down uh to the subatomic level and then just gets sent over that way that, that's teleporter is not that difficult to come up with if somebody were to create one like if i were to make one i would make ups fedex and the united states postal service my bitch i <laughs> I would hold that over their heads and go, look, I can get stuff to people so much faster than any of you ever hope to. And I would I, I would freaking do it. I, I really would. But um uh, I don't I can't make a teleporter. I wish I could. I wish I could. I would I would do that. I would do that so fast. Uh, what are your thoughts on the famous Goosebump books by R. L. Stein? Also a famous staple of the nineties, like Pokemon. Uh I liked the Goosebump books. There were a couple that I liked. Uh, Attack of the Mutant was one of my favorites. In fact, we actually have that copy. It's a fun story behind that. Uh, the one teacher aide, when I was in middle school, she was cleaning out her son's book collection because he didn't want it anymore. And she was asking the classes, hey, you know, do you guys want any of these books? This is what I have. And she brought them in, what she had left. It was like maybe about, I'd say like 25 books. And you could dig through it first come first serve and the one of the books was in there was attack of the mutant i'm like oh attack, can i have this one and she's like yeah any of them in the book any in the box you get first dibs first come first serve on it you know you can't have them all but you take what you want i took uh, attack of the mutant that, that was really the only one i wanted because the other ones i wasn't really too fond of nor did i know much about uh but attack of the mutant was one of my favorites uh, and i also had one um i think i got it from elementary school uh, I think my when I think it was like when my uh, elementary school teacher, my sixth grade teacher, was uh, changing classrooms. She was giving. She's like, I don't want to take this book over with me, or I don't need these extra books. You guys can have some. And I got uh, another goosebump one that had like a robot cyborg on the front of it, uh, kind of reaching out. I I think I still have that buried somewhere in my room, buried over around here somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I kind of liked it. Um. But yeah, I like Goosebump books. Some of the stories were a little stupid, like um, the mask one, and they made a sequel to that one, uh, like the Halloween one where the kid had the mask on, and then the next year another kid has the same, puts on a different mask, it has the same ability, and that was a little fucking creepy. I didn't like that one. Uh, Say Cheese and Die was, I swear I remember reading an article somewhere that that one was based off of a Twilight Zone episode that had a similar theme to it. And I love that. I liked it, but I was I love the Twilight episode, Twilight Zone episode more. So what does that tell you? Uh, but yeah, I I Goosebump books were fun. They, they were a good little uh, distraction. Uh, did I ever read them cover to cover? Hell no. I I, I got them like in elementary school from the library because uh, we had to take we had to take a chapter book. I didn't want to take a chapter book. I mostly went to the drawing books and some of the other stuff. I just picked some stuff at random. Uh, we could not take like anything from the little kids section. We had to take at least a chapter book, depending on what grade you were in. And I went to the you know learn to draw books, and the librarian got a little pissed because he only had one copy of this one drawing book, and everybody in my class wanted to get their hands on this one. It was my turn, and it literally just got checked back in. And we knew where the cart was. She goes, "You guys can go to the cart and get something. If it's already been checked in, it's on this cart. It means it just wasn't put back on the shelf yet, but it's fine." And she flipped out on us the one day for it, and I was like, "Okay, I'm never doing that again." So, but yeah, uh, as far as Pokemon, yeah, it's a staple of the '90s. Uh, both it and Goosebumps are definitely staples of the '90s. Uh, definitely. Uh, what, let's see. Favorite types of YouTubers. Oh, there's a lot. Uh, I like DIY stuff. So, like, uh, DIY Perks, um, Hacksmith. 
He's pretty good stuff. Um, I like a lot of ones that allow me to see fantasy, ones that uh, like do game reviews, ones that do like anime show reviews, stuff that people that just like put up clips of anime, discuss stuff. Uh, just a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, different types of YouTubers. I like I like reviewers, um, discussers, instructors, those type of things. Like ones that can teach me some interesting things. One that like has like a discussion that you can open it up then in the description or the comment section, I should say. And um, just ones that just throw shit up there for random. I love those. So I, mean, I can't really narrow down a specific type. Um, do I like a lot of the ones that do like all live streaming stuff? Oh hell no. <laughs> Uh, I don't mind it every now and then. I mean, I was watching a lot of Zero the First, and he, he did some good stuff. I'm not going to lie. If you ever check out his channel, he does some pretty cool stuff. Um, but I, I'm not a person that's going to watch a live stream every single day. Uh, some of those can go like three, four, or five hours. I'm not going to watch a three, four, five hour live stream every day. I don't, I, I have a life. <laughs> I don't, mean, I don't mean that sound excessive. I have a life. It's just, um, you know, I don't have uh, the time to sit there and watch a live stream every single day. But, yeah, you get my idea. Uh, be like, I, I like YouTubers that I can, like, learn something. They do, like, episodic ones where they'll teach you something in, like, an episode, like DIY Perks or uh, Ron Hazleton's channel. Um, stuff that I didn't know, things that I can learn, like, uh, passing hobby or something I might do so it's it, it's an interesting idea but some of those YouTube channels I kind of like uh let's see where am I right, here we go uh let's see if you were an ant what species of ant would you be I only know like one or two species of ants I like picnic ants and fire ants that's it uh I'll go with picnic ants I, I would probably at least be well fed <laughs> I, I don't know. I only know like two different types of ants, um, and I got bit by both of them. Well, I know I, know I got bit by a picnic by a picnic ant one, once on my thumb when I was in kindergarten, and I was being nice. I was being nice to that little bash. I thought it was my friend. And I'm like petting the top of it. It's like a tiny little. I'm like, this is like, oh, you're gonna be a nice little ant. Oh, it's so nice, and it bites me, and I just ripped it right off, and its head was still stuck on my finger, and I was screaming and crying. I was oh man I hated that um, fire ant so I would not have I don't think I would have survived I don't think I've I don't think I've actually met a fire ant if I have I've not known it I think most of the ones I have like around me are what they would consider picnic ants but I don't know uh, really I, I can't answer that one as well as I sh probably should I, I apologize for that. Uh, let's see here uh, if you were romantically pursued by Bigfoot what would you do run like hell. <laughs> I would, I would run like hell. Uh, see, if I was romantically pursued by Bigfoot, um, I hate to say this, Bigfoot, but um, you're uh, going to a Smithsonian. I will, I will literally, I will literally take you to those Bigfoot hunters and go look what I found. I want my money. I want my fame. I want my credits. Oh yeah, yeah. Bigfoot here with like a house. No, in all honesty, I would probably run. I would run like hell. I don't think I would look back. I Man, this Bigfoot's really nice. I, I, I don't know. I mean, Bigfoot's nice, you know. Be quiet solitude. Uh, that, that that's a good question. Oh uh, yeah, Bigfoot be, be quiet solitude. Um, not a lot of uh, people to bother me or anything else. And getting some of my uh, brisk tea here, as you can see. Um. I, I don't really I don't know I don't I don't know um, I don't know that's actually a good question though uh what, what would I do if I was romantically uh, pursued by Bigfoot I probably like I said I'd probably run like hell be freaked out if anything <laughs> definitely freaked out uh what would you rather have from the waist down the body of a housefly or an eel Ooh. Okay, so we're talking like the human fly or an eel. Is it an electric eel? Because if it's an electric eel, I'll go with the eel. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm screwed either way. <laughs> if it's a house fly, I'm really fucked. <laughs> if it's an eel, I might have a chance. If it's a house fly, I'm royally screwed. Um, I've seen the fly. That, that, that was disturbing. That was disturbing. I've seen the fly. That, that was a disturbing movie. Uh... Ooh, 
Um, jeez. I, I'll go with eel. I, at least I have a chance I can be in the water. If I'm an electric eel, it's even better. Uh, housefly, I'm screwed. <laughs> housefly, I'm screwed. I'm screwed five ways from Friday if I'm a housefly. Uh, what's your favorite episode of a TV series? I have quite a few, actually. So, um, I have, like, favorite episodes of The Simpsons. I have some favorite episodes of Futurama. Uh, I have two episodes of South Park that I really like. Uh, my number one favorite, though, out of South Park is Make Love Not Warcraft Season 10. I love that episode. Um, I have some favorite episodes of Steven Universe, some episodes of Ed, Ed and Eddie. Um... Danny Phantom, uh, Adventure Time. I actually like a couple episodes of Regular Show. Uh, I have a couple favorite episodes of Powerpuff Girls, the original one, not the 2016 atrocity. Uh, I have some favorite episodes of anime series like uh, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I have a lot of favorite episodes. It would depend. Uh, far too many of them for me here to, for me to list here, but, uh, maybe I'll do a discussion video on it someday or just talk about it in general one day. But yeah, I, I mean, I'd really have to sit down and get like every single episode, like the name, the title, which number it is to give everybody. But yeah, so and besides make love, not Warcraft, I only know that one because I had to track down that episode online to watch it. So there is I mean, again to watch it, but, uh, yeah, so that's definitely but uh yeah i have a lot of favorite episodes i mean i like a lot of the simpsons uh there's even like some reality shows that i kind of liked like one or two episodes on uh some tv dramas that i kind of liked a couple episodes it it would depend on what it is but like i said i'd have to get a whole list up and that's that that's something i could do for a discussion video to be honest with you so i'll look into that for a discussion video if you don't mind that being my answer uh for the time being anyway uh, what are your favorite fruits or vegetables? Uh, okay, fruits. I like grapes to a point. I I remember I went up to a friend's place uh, one summer, and I was just chowing down these grapes that she got uh, at the local supermarket, and I was like, yeah, these are really good. And I was taking a whole bunch of them. I didn't even realize it. So I'm like, yeah, these are really good, and I was just eating them. Uh, I love watermelon. I can never get my hands on it, though. Uh, when we do get one, it's very, very rare. But I do like watermelon. I mean, we got one, uh, I would say, 2016, we got one. And I think that was the last one I've had since. And it's it's been a good four years. I think I have to try to get, get one this year. Uh, but, yeah, I like watermelon. I, like, I do like watermelon. It is good. Um, I like it a lot. I like watermelon a lot. Uh, but apples. Uh, bananas aren't exactly one of my favorites. Um, blueberries, I like them. Uh, as far as vegetables, corn. That's it. I, I'm not a huge vegetable eater. I am I did not have to eat broccoli as a kid. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. My mom did not force me to eat broccoli as a kid. I, I was a picky eater growing up, so... If I didn't eat it, my mom wasn't going to force me to eat it. It, it, it was. A, she figured, okay, this is going to be a losing battle. I'm not going to force him to eat something that I know he's not going to eat. Uh, my grandparents wanted me to eat something. My mom would say, look, he's not going to eat it. You know he's not going to eat it. I'm not going to force him to eat it. Just, I'm just going to make him this. It's fine. He, as long as he eats something, I don't care. You know, it's so long as he eats something. That's all that matters. Uh, when I mean, when I was going to first grade... Uh, my I got in trouble in with my first grade teacher because I ate. I said the one day I said, "Yeah, I had pizza for lunch. I had pizza for breakfast." And my first grade teacher goes, "Pizza is not breakfast." Oh no, no, pizza was breakfast because we had some leftover from the night before. We went to a place called Pizza Time, and I oh, I missed that place. <laughs> I missed that place. But um, we went there for a. We went there for dinner the night before, and there were still a couple slices left. And I'm like, can I have that for breakfast? And my mom's like, sure, go for it. So she she heated it up quick in the microwave, like 30 seconds, and I had a couple slices of pizza for breakfast. Because when I was a kid, my pediatrician goes, look, he's a picky eater. I don't care 
If, if he wants pizza for breakfast, feed him fucking pizza for breakfast. So long as he goes to school with something in his stomach, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I only ever took advantage of that one time. I ate a bag of chips in the morning. My mom was a little upset about that. But at the same time, I... I, I think the thing was with me then is that I was putting on a lot of weight because then during the summer between um, my 7th and 8th grade year, or my, even like my 6th, 7th and 8th grade year, my uh, – yeah, it's definitely my 6th and 7th year, I skyrocketed in height. So it's like I was like slightly sort of a little on the pudgy side, then all of a sudden, boom, I shot up. So there was that. But um yeah, I I'm a picky eater. So corn's like my all time favorite vegetable. I don't really like any other vegetables. I mean, I eat tomatoes that are in like pizza sauce, and that's technically considered a fruit and a vegetable, so there's both there. <laughs> you could say, but uh as far as vegetables go, I don't eat that many fruits, so I eat a lot more fruits than I do vegetables. Uh I had an apple every single day in school. Um I don't eat them all the time anymore because it's one of those things that after you've eaten it every single day for lunch for years on end you get tired of eating it and I just didn't want to eat it anymore so there was that um but yeah I'm just not a huge vegetable eater fruits though I, I eat fruits so I'm just not a huge vegetable eater uh how would you describe your drawings so far uh if they're good or poor uh I could probably still improve. Uh, I'm not going to lie. There, there's still room for improvement yet. As far as um, is they're good or poor, I don't know. I'm getting them all fixed up. I'm going to do an entire video uh, for everybody to see the drawings that I did so far. So that is coming. Don't worry. Uh, once I end up having to go back to work, I will put that video up. Uh, most of them are on like little pieces of paper. I actually have... Um... Yeah, I have one that's, like, buried over here. I'm not going to dig it out. But it's, like, a little square about, like, maybe this big a paper. And that's what a majority of them are on. So I'm going to be blowing that up so you can see it. I do have some that are on bigger pages and things like that. So, uh, But as far as, like, good or poor, it's better than when I started. I'm, I'm not going to lie about that. I do have a picture that I ironically found uh, last – I think no, it was, ironically was last night. It was last night I found a picture that I drew last night. Uh, a while back, I'm going to throw that in as a control. Like, this is where I started. This is where I'm at now. And I do have a few of them that I've done that I am really proud of that I have never been able to duplicate. Uh, most of the ones on my little pieces of paper I've signed, like put my initials in 20 at the after it to signify the year. Uh, ones that are in my uh, little sketchbook, which I'm going to have to take pictures of because I can't scan those in. I am... I don't have, I've signed, so you're, they're mine, believe me, they're mine, I drew them, uh, I didn't copy them or anything, they're mine, I drew them, it's just that I don't have a way to scan those in without ripping them out of the book, and I want to rip them out of the book, so I'll just take pictures of those, and I'm planning to put it up, I just don't know if I want to do like commentary with each one, or just put them all up as like a little artistic gallery of sorts, I think I might just do the gallery idea, <laughs> I, mean, I found some good music with the YouTube uh, audio library, so that might work out. Uh, all right, that's all the questions that I had this month, 18 of them. That's pretty cool. I'm at the 43-minute video here. That's uh, really impressive. It's going to take a while to upload probably. Uh, but, yeah, so uh, I don't know yet when we want to do the next one uh, because uh, with everything that's going on right now, uh, I'm tentative, like, second week in May to go back to work. Uh, I don't know. Too many probabilities might happen, pop up there. Um, since May ends on a Sunday, and I'm not going to even attempt that, uh, 23rd at the latest as of right now, uh, tw anywhere between the 23rd and the 25th, I'll let you know if I have to change that date at all, but that's, I'll shoot for there, have your, uh, May questions in by, and, uh, yeah, that should pretty much do it then, so, uh, thank you all for tuning in for this video, uh, for the Q&A video, I apologize. If you you know if you like the mic like this, let me know. Because if you do, I will definitely do this again. Because th I liked having it like this. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I think I came in pretty clear. Uh, I didn't like move the mic around or anything. I didn't. Oh, stuff from there. I just <laughs> just upper <laughs> I just upper cut the mic to the boom arm there. Uh, yeah, I didn't uh, change anything around on it. So. 
Uh, if you like the mic like this, you like the format like this, I'll keep it like this. Because right now, this is the only mic I got. Because my little lapel mic just shit out on me, and I'm pissed about that. But uh, otherwise, I'm going to look around for another mic. Uh, I have this one. There's nothing wrong with it. Happily. It's not going to break. Knock on wood. Uh, so, well, knock on laminated wood, but still wood. Uh, so, yeah, so there is that. But um, anyway, uh, thank you all for uh, submitting your questions. Thank you all for tuning in for this month's Q&A video. And uh, thank you all for subscribing here to the official Web Designer 18 YouTube channel. So uh, thank you all again. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, well, I'll see you around on my channel.